Hi. <laughs> Do you want to say hi, Sierra? It's going to come in a little bit later on there. Can we get framed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, How's I'm going to be here good? somewhere. No? What a shot! Good. Do you want to introduce yeah. the situation? What's happening, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Um, first of all, uh, last time we did this, there was a bit of confusion about the timeline. This is live. We are here in French Polynesia. We've sailed across the Pacific from different parts of Mexico. And this is obviously different to our regularly scheduled episodes. Our regular episodes are numbered and slightly behind real time. So yours are all numbered, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now, both of our channels are in Mexico. And uh, we're in the shipyard, and you guys are just about to leave, right? Yep. Yeah. First class of So obviously we've skipped ahead to do this live, but so many of you guys were telling us to meet up with Dallas and create some content. And unfortunately, we're uh, we're all going our separate ways tomorrow, so this is our last chance yeah. to sort of do something. So we thought a live would be super fun, super cool for you guys. Um, you so. Been live in a while. No, it's oh, okay. been a while for us. You guys still. did one when you crossed the equator, right? Yeah. Yeah. We did a live equator crossing and then everyone was like, and then we went back to our normal episodes and people uh, were like, what are you doing? We've just seen you cross the equator. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. okay, so that's why. It I can get to... confusing. Yeah. But... It is, yeah. yeah. But if you go to the numbered episodes, they're all in chronological order. Um, so if you've just come over from Instagram or something and you just happen to not know who SD Dallas are, uh, let me do the intro because these guys are way too modest. Um, they've just had their 13th um, YouTube birthday. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. It's been a little while. So That's these guys. <laughs> it's like a long time. They're the originals. They were doing it before. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Your right, your right shoulder was. Oh. Okay, we're going to try to keep this under an hour because we've got plans tonight. But um, Hannah is over there. She's been standing around. She crossed the Pacific with um, Dallas as well. Um, but she's going to be moderating the comments a little bit. Um, there might be a few comments. It might be hard to keep track. If you want to um, have your comment recognized, just put a little super chat. That's just a little bit of beer money that we're going to split between us. Um, and, and make your comment a little bit more um, known. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, the topic is what is it like to live full time on a sailboat? Um, I left New Zealand when I was 22 years old and I've, I've been working on super yachts um, since then on and off and uh, now living on Parlay full time for six years. So that's my background. These guys have been on the boat for. Yeah, well, I bought Dallas in 2008 in Seattle, and then did the sail down the coast, Mexico, across the South Pacific, did a full circuit navigation, yeah. actually met Karen in New Zealand. And I had never, never sailed before, I met Brian, so it was like I, a big... I invited her to come sailing for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and I never left. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a hell of a weekend. Yeah, so, and that, yeah, that was a long time ago as well. Yeah. I've learned a lot, and... Yeah, it's been amazing. We've had 70 crew. 70. Tom is the 70th crew we've yeah. had on board. Which is crazy too. Age range of 3 to mid 70s, I'd say. Like yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> From you know, 13 different countries. Yeah. Uh, all over the world. Wow. It's, been, it's been fun. It's been a lot of different people. A lot of, a lot of good, a lot of bad, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. Yeah. Um, like mostly good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll start with the first question. Um, how how um, has living full time on a sailboat, which is a small space, how has that affected uh, your guys' relationship? Ooh, uh, well, there's one thing that I learned is that if you have problems in your, in your relationship, I think that sailing on a boat is like a pressure cooker, in that it'll take those problems and it'll just right. explode. Right. So, uh, but if you do have a good relationship and a good understanding, good communication, then it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, and so I think that Karen and I work quite well together. Um, we're very complimentary in that I am not a planner. I just like to go and figure it out. Yeah. I'm a planner. Of, she's like the Swedish <laughs> planner, right? I'm an organizer. Yeah. And like, I'm like, ah, oh, we don't need a list. It's like, we should have a list. So, yeah. I think a, a relationship that can last as long as yours has on a boat yeah. is a pretty yeah. solid one. I'd, I'd like to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through a couple. Adding Sierra into the mix, I think, has been, extre like, has been probably the hardest thing we've gone through in our relationship, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I mean, anybody yeah. that knows what raising a child is all about, yeah. everything's harder on a boat. Right, shopping's harder, getting doing laundry's harder, like just any normal life thing's harder. Raising a child on a boat is definitely harder. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's like having no, not very little support from like that you can give her somebody that can watch her for an hour or even it has been very no. difficult because like you can't you need to talk about something, you can't really talk about it because you are too tired in the end of the day. <laughs> like she wakes up early, so. Yeah, that has definitely had a lot of challenges, but it's also amazing to be able to spend, you know, 24 hours as a family. Yeah. So it has both. You get to spend so much time. Yeah. 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 And she's, you know, they're just discovering the underwater world. And so the other day we were snorkeling the next anchorage, she's just looking down and she's seeing fish. Like, there's fish, there's sharks, there's rays, there's all sorts of. She saw a turtle off the boat the other day. And she's yeah. Like, turtle, it's just like the one in my book. Yeah, it's just like the one in the book, except it's in real life. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's very cool. I mean, education that kids get in, in this environment is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, what I think? Looking ahead, what do you think about schooling yeah. for Sierra? Yeah. Yeah. What? Mommy, Daddy, Doug. Oh. Well, I, I mean, I'm not against homeschooling. Yeah. Homeschooling yeah. for yeah. yeah. um, baby. I'm definitely baby. not good at certain subjects, but I think you are strong at those subjects, like math I can, I can and do the math and the science. <laughs> I cannot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can do the art and the crafts and the animals and stuff, but. Yeah, I think we can definitely do something like that. Um, there is different options. We've also talked about maybe stopping for a little bit, putting her maybe in daycare, seeing what that's like for a bit, and then 
you know, you just, I think with her, I've, I've felt always that it's like, we do whatever feels right. Someone like, said, everyone, a lot of people are saying the mic is... Should we move it closer? The, Can I not hear? It's hard to hear. Some people are saying it's hard to hear. I wonder if it's because of Sierra in the background, or if it's... No, it, the the people are saying mic, mic, move mic closer. Oh, uh, really? Move camera closer, or speak louder? Hi. Um, Can you hear us, guys? Can you let us know? No. Because civic. What I'm seeing. Yeah, I can't can't hear. Yeah. Can this tip back? Too much extra. Really? Oh. <laughs> That's why we get tossed around the mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super chat does not look set up. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our second live ever. It's going Moderator. swimmingly. <laughs> So you can't hear us and you can't talk to us. <laughs> right. You can't see us anymore. You're doing good here. Cheers. Oh, I guess we'll just have a few drinks then. Can you hear anything, guys? Better. Is this... They said better. You guys sound great. Okay, yeah, better now. Okay. Okay. Maybe you just have to speak just a little louder. And yell. Sit Shout. a little closer. We're mumbling to each other. Yeah. Um, any good questions, Hannah? Um, there's... One burning question. I know it was close, but then whose passage was the quickest? Oh, <laughs> this is, this is a debate. This is a debate. Is it? I yeah. feel like you are very competitive. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't understand this. Like, I don't know. We were saying like, we were like, yeah, we beat Dollar. Like, they don't, they don't like even know that they were in a race, <laughs> but we beat. <laughs> but we didn't leave from the same place. No. And we didn't leave at the same time. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we weren't like, actually racing. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in my head. Uh, so but how many miles did you do? So we did like, it was 29.80 something. Okay. It was like, we just, I just said it was 3,000. It was like within 3,000 miles. Yeah. And we did it in 19 days Shit. and 14 hours. Mommy, homie, homie. Because we left from La Paz. So, yeah, yeah. We, we had to sail like another 150 miles just to get to the, the tip. Yeah. yeah, and then from Cabo, you you kind of had a better angle, but we had, we had great. I was really happy. Yeah, and really we were sailing like upwind to try to get out of um, Puerto Vallarta. Um, and you guys I think also you guys motored for how long? <laughs> <laughs> These I guys motored for 90 minutes, <laughs> which is unheard of, basically. Yeah, yeah. last, last time freakish. we had to motor for like three days. Yeah. yeah. We had a really fantastic And how long season. did you motor for? Four and a half hours. I'd, oh, I'd honestly not say... Not that's, that's not bad. That's good. We were pretty happy with it. Yeah. Like, you, guys, you guys did such a good good crossing. That is unbelievable. So how many miles for you then? 2,855. Okay, so that's pretty close. Yeah, you did an extra 100 miles. So you went, you were four hours faster, but we sailed 150 miles more. That's yeah. not bad with the 3,000 miles. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, pretty close, really. Yeah. Yeah. There was opportunity to buddy boat in the future. The boats are pretty well, yeah. well matched. Yeah. yeah. Huh. But, so, um, well, I don't know. Oh yeah. I'm gonna give it to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Even though on our channel we've been humble, celebrating. Humble <laughs> <laughs> no. I won! I won! The best part is that they didn't even know that they were racing. <laughs> 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 we're just like, yeah, you won! Oh. That was easy before we left. Well, yeah, right. you, why don't you guys change the destination? <laughs> to a little bit further east in the Tomotos and we'll leave at the, at the same time. We could. The... Which island are you going to? Uh, Rororora. Ro ah, that's where uh, Rob's going. Rororora. Ro yeah. yeah. Ro -ro -ro. <laughs> it looks Ro -ro -ro. great. We're all super stoked for the Tomotos. It's going to be yeah. gin clear water, sharks, and swimming, yeah. and yeah. There's lots of sharks in that one that you guys are going to. Yeah. Yeah. We, we could go there. we got time. Um, how many miles is it? 450. From here? A bit closer. We were going to go to Fakarava, but how many miles is that? 500. Is it? Yeah. I hope I'm counting. Yours is like, uh, the one you're going to is it's sort a of north of everything else, right? Yeah, and a little further east. It's, it's like 176 miles to Fakarava from on the angle. Yeah. 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 Like that down It'd be a right? nice sail, yeah. It'd be a great yeah. Got anything else for us, Hannah? Um, who broke more stuff? On the passage. Ooh. We didn't break that many things. 
Maybe, maybe you got you. Oh, we broke our tea kettle. Yeah. The tea kettle fell off the counter and broke in the sink. <laughs> how was your How was your um your coolant hose? <laughs> oh, I broke. Oh, we, yeah, yeah sure. we got a hole in the coolant the hose. The first thing that happened. The first we pulled the hook up, engine on, motor and out of the anchorage. Like five engine. minutes. Beep 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 beep. Overheat <laughs> alarm. I'm like, oh come on, it's gotta be fake. No, it was real. Yeah, it's not Open the engine room door. Coolant all over the place. <laughs> Great. Okay. So we just. That was the Are we going to turn around? Nope. Let's go. Fix Brian it. taped it. Fix the tape. It's still going. So that broke. The fridge fan broke. Yeah, we had a fridge fan go out. The tea kettle. Tea kettle. We had a shape in the halyard. That's pretty much it, right? We, didn't, we caught the halyard in time. Yeah. So that's it. Have you spoken to other cruises that are here that have just crossed? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, there's some people horror crazy. stories. stories. Crazy. Yeah. They're losing strands on rigging, they're losing sails, yeah. kites in the water. Um, that, dog, uh, that boat Lucky Dog, you hear about them? He no. left them. Did they, they lost their rigging? No way. Lucky Dog lost their rudder. And oh, they, their rudder. they had to abandon the boat. And it was just drifting out there. They left the AIS on. This is oh, a crazy story. Yeah. And then um, they came to Fatu Iva, was it? Or Iva Oa? One of these islands. And um, made a rudder in Iva Oa at the shipyard. Yeah. And they went back out to the boat. They chartered a yacht, chartered a sailboat, sailed out there with this captain, found the boat, <laughs> and put this emergency rudder on and then sailed it back to Eva oh, that's and now they're, now they're cruising around. That is wild. And yeah, Nini Mahuni, another boat, they lost their rig and they, they came back to the cruise. We met a... them in uh, Bar of Navidad. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? Yeah, you super nice yeah. family. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, and even f friends that we met in the other anchors, like they both their engines wow. broke, like people have had some really tough passages, so I feel like people, wow. you guys broke the sail, right? Wow. We blew the stinker out, and um, there were three things, smashed the solar panel, blew the stinker and what's the other thing? It started with S as well. <laughs> um, not your shitter. Wow. <laughs> shitter, sail drive. Satellite. What was the other thing? S. Wow. Ah, sink. Sink. Ah, the sink. That sink just fell straight out of the oh. Oh. table. <laughs> <laughs> but the the company that built it just glued the sink up into the quartz. Oh. So the epoxy just broke and the thing just fell down. Oh. Okay. So the three S's. But yeah, the spinnaker was a big blow. That was in the first week. Yeah, that must and, have been. And uh, yeah, we yeah, lost. Yeah, that's probably going to come in useful. Yeah. Yeah, but we got a nice code D, which was, thank goodness we had that. Um, but yeah, some, some people had a horrible crossing, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. 24, 25 days. Ooh. 30 days, we were like 44 days. From Panama, right? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I thought it would be a lot more challenging to see her on the boat. Like, I was pretty nervous. It would be, you know, our longest passage with her. And, you know, she's three and a half, so she's very active and just like, go, go, go. And she was amazing. And she was only like seasick for the first, a little bit for the first three days, and then she was like less seasick than I was. Really? <laughs> like I was more feeling more queasy than she was. So <laughs> it was, yeah, it was amazing. Like I was so impressed with her. What um, what sort of medical? Um, how was your medical kit and stuff? Having a toddler on the on the boat yet? Yeah, yeah. We have pretty much. Yeah, like, we've got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. We have yeah. two full cabinets and dedicated. Yeah. And the antibiotics and yeah, a bunch of and... Uh, specific stuff for Sierra because she's so small you can't really split a normal antibiotic pill up so much so we you know it's uh, powders that we have that we can you know find one like way and uh, cut in half and yeah. then mix with water and we have some injectable stuff yeah. um, a lot of tape and glue yeah and having lived on a boat for so long, how is the communications um, the ability to, to communicate with, say, doctors or whatever? Oh, it's so um, different since when you started. So when I first started, it was uh, side band radio. Yeah. Right. If you wanted to talk, and I had a sat phone, like an Iridium ninety five oh five, but it was so expensive. Yeah. You just would. It was emergency, emergency. Yeah. Money. Uh, or you'd use the single side band, and you'd be sending like emails over the back to our modem or something. And now. We can do like full on Facebook, yeah. uh, Messenger streaming, WhatsApp, um, FaceTime, whatever we want with doctor, pediatricians, no, no. whatever we need. Amazing. 
Yeah. How has um, styling changed quality yeah. of life? Yeah, I mean, that's out here in the world. So we've had uh, Viasat oh, that's uh, right. before. So in the Atlantic, we had it for three years. Yeah. Uh, and so that's when we got our first taste of being connected anywhere. Yeah. Which was a game changer. Yeah. Uh, and now we're continuing on the Starlink in the Pacific, and that continues to be it mostly was, amazing. It was really good for us in the past. Like, we didn't use it, we used it mostly just for, like, work, and then I felt like yeah, it was we fine. Some Instagram posts. Yeah. Stuff. Like, and we were able to keep up with, you know, emails and all this stuff. Like, usually when we come into port otherwise, it's so intense for, like, a week or two because we haven't done anything for a month, right? Mm. So then you just, like, glued to the computer for yeah. so long while it's here. We could kind of, like, just do, like, an hour a day or two hours a day and just, like, kind of keep, yeah, keep up with it. And it was, yeah, it was amazing because when we came in, we could just, like, really enjoy and have time off. So I, I personally didn't feel like it was very negative at all for me. No, I mean, it does have a big old power switch on it, so you can just turn it off. Yep. Don't yeah. connect, right? And you've got the, the, the RV. Yeah, you just got the standard rod, $500 yeah. pound fish. Yeah. yeah, right. How was it for you and the dogs? I feel like a lot of people are probably wondering that too. Like, I was wondering, I was, that was my first question. <laughs> How was the dogs on the passage? <laughs> yeah, um, everyone, you guys have seen the, the dog map down there. That's obviously yeah. where they go, so. I mean, they're, they're pretty much like clockwork. They'll eat in the morning and then go to the bathroom and clean it up. And then they'll eat in the evening and then go to the bathroom and clean it up. And it's, for some reason, we didn't even train them to do it. They just always go to the bathroom on the mats. They just started doing it. I guess it's the only grassy looking thing on the boat. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way, you know. We just love having the dogs and their great security and their cuddly and... Yeah, it's uh, awesome. it's got its challenges traveling with dogs, but um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. That's awesome. Is any, uh, any more questions? Huh? Yeah. So, from a pa one of your patreons, they said, um, looking on AAS, surprised by the number of private boats currently in the Marquesas. Colin, were you expecting more private coves? And Brian, was it this popular when you visited ten years ago? Ooh, you go. that was okay, so the question was, there's a lot of boats here, according to Anna's. Is it true, and was it that way? Yeah. Uh, I do remember there being quite a few boats. I don't think there was this many, though. I mean, there's like, I don't know how many boats are here now. I mean, this is a popular 40, 50, this is one of the main anchorages, yeah. though. Um, I think in places like Fatu Kiva, there was about the same amount of boats. Really? Uh, Ten years ago. There was less boats in Daniel's Bay when we were there. Uh, there was way more boats in Kiva Oa uh, when we checked in, and so it's... But this I, was also like the first this, very open year after COVID, right? Like when yeah. everything is open, I think it's so a big rush. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people waited, so yeah. yeah. Did you guys, were you part of any groups or anything? I was part of the uh, Pacific Paddle Jump, okay. which is a very informal kind of like rally that leads at different times. Did you find it useful? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You guys it's a sharing. lot of good information. Yeah. Yeah. But now we're just not the... Now we're just winging it. Yeah. <laughs> Same with us. We were in um, one called the Pacific Voyages from yeah. Puerto Vallarta. And it was a ma an am amazing community. We'd meet every Friday and we'd have a guy talking about weather, like a really good weather router, basically. And uh, we just saw so many boats leaving and we could see where they were. And it was just really comforting knowing that uh, there were so many boats doing the same yeah. passage, right? Yeah. yeah. It was a detour to help them out. Yeah, and they crazy. gave them fuel yeah. and... Yeah, it was an incredible thing, but to be part of that community, because it's a pretty, um, pretty daunting thing for a lot of us. Like I was, I was definitely a healthy amount of nervous about it. Um, yeah. Maybe not so much for you guys, but for us doing our first proper big ocean crossing sure. was, um, and and I was definitely <laughs> pretty nervous about it. You're just so remote, you know. Yeah. It's just... and once you get out, it's a real challenge to get back. Yeah. It's a lot. Of yeah. Every You're mile committed. downwind is like two miles up there. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're yeah, so committed. So we stopped at one of the islands, San Benedicto. I think you guys have been there. Or you went yeah, to we stopped at Socorro. Yeah, it was right next to it. Yeah. And that was, that was truly our last 
it was land. Yeah. Until we That's still like 400 miles off the coast. Yeah, it was, it was a good shakedown for sure. Yeah. And then once you leave there, you just have to move that way. Yeah. It was a lot. Well, the, what was the, there was something with the, the other part of yeah. that question was how. Something about the AIS. Like, no. <laughs> I think it was some. What was it, Hana? Sorry. Another part of that question for Colin, it was like if um, it was more secluded. Did you, did you expect more empty bays? Yeah, like more empty here in the Marquesas. I did. So I've been to French Polynesia. I've been to two atolls before in Tahiti. Oh, you have. Yeah, oh, cool. um, but not sailing. Just just surfing, and it's nothing like this. Yeah. So I, I didn't really know what to expect here. Um, but there, are, there's got to be 50 boats in this one anchorage right here. Yeah. Like so you were expecting a little bit less boats. Yeah, I yeah. was. I was. Yeah. Then I also, you know, as you check AIS and everything like that, you see more and more people turning up. Yeah. It's like a, yeah, bit of a traffic jam out there actually <laughs> coming into, because all the Panama people are coming across and the Mexico guys are coming down. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 But everybody kind of spreads out from here, right? Like there's actually not that many islands. <coughs> In yeah. Our cases, and of the two islands, there's only two main ports, right? Yeah. So everybody, we need to do anything with like provisioning or immigration or the jumbo and the customs. It's here or Hibaola. Yeah. So it's like a compression point, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, the two amatus though, that's going to be something else, right? Yeah. There's so I'm many. I'm really looking forward to that. How many have you done already, then? Uh, I only went to two last time. Oh, really? The Taki and. Uh, Rangaroa. Yeah. Yeah. I just spent a couple weeks at each. Part of the problem last time is you know, you're only allowed three months on your normal visa yeah. here as a U.S. citizen. And are you allowed the same? Yeah. And three you months. get, as a Swedish citizen, you get the same too. Right? Well, three so, months? Oh no, you don't. You get, you get a year. Oh, obviously. Yeah. Two years. I was then. like, what? <laughs> I thought it was a second. Like, right? <laughs> no, no, scratch that. She <laughs> can. Uh, <laughs> EU citizens can stay indefinitely. Yeah, so I can and just so stay. Like and Sierra can just stay because she has both Swedish and yeah. US passport. And so and you last gonna, time yeah. I only had three months. It was like a month here, a month in Tumotos, and a month in like Tahiti and all that. Yeah. But now we applied for the long stay visa. And so right. I can stay for one year at a time. And I applied as. And it was easier because he did it, because he's the husband daddy, he can do it through us. And then it was like easier for you. Yeah. You didn't have to do it beforehand. So yeah. we're stoked. We're probably just gonna bum around here for a year at least. There's so much to see, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. How many islands in the tour market is there's a lot? Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. about that. So only having done two, you've got so much more to see this time. Yeah. yeah. But I still think that but we've always felt like we should go less places but stay longer in each. Right, and just really kind of get to know the place and the vibe, and mm -hmm. um, you know, when you start diving and you get to know like the best places to get in the water and the best times and the best currents and all that's kind of acquired knowledge. And mm -hmm. It's like we probably won't go to too many places. We'll just spend a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. In each one. It must be nice having having that the time to be able to do that. You know, a lot of the times we were rushing. Yeah. Like season hurricane yeah. seasons yeah. or. Yeah. Cyclone seasons in the Pacific. It's got all these deadlines, but you guys are just cruising for a year. Yeah. So for us, we got to get out of here by the end of August, and then and then we're racing to get to New Zealand before the cyclone season. Yeah. So we've got to. Um, I want to be there by November. So yeah, just just bouncing between seasons basically. Yeah. Mm. Any other good question? Yeah, not complaining. Good question. Um, <laughs> what do you love the most about living on the water, and what do you miss the most about living on land? I love the freedom of living on a boat. I, lo I love a lot of things about living on a boat. I mean, I guess that's why we do it. But <laughs> and I love that you can like bring all your creature comforts with you and take your home to like different countries. And you can wake up in a completely different place. Like we woke up in New York City, you know, and then you wake up here and you like, it's still your house and you still have all your nice things and yeah. your pillow and like all your things that you love with you. 
Um, that's a really, really special part for me. Uh, the thing that I miss the most is definitely family. Yeah. No question about that. Like being so far away from family is very difficult and I'm starting to feel it more. I don't know if it's like the mom things, that <laughs> but I'm starting to feel it more and more after having Sierra. Just, you know, like wanting to be close to family and wanting to have, wanting to, for her to have the relationship with my family, yeah. Brian's family. Yeah. You know, like that, yeah, that's hard. Mm. I love looking outside because on the boat most of the time unless the weather is really 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 crap we're looking outside like mm. we're always in the cockpit we're always hiking we're always swimming yeah uh, we're very rarely inside except when we're sleeping uh, and then the stuff I miss the most probably the food stuff like I don't know if anyone knows but you know there is a real egg shortage here <laughs> For some reason, eggs are impossible to find, and I found eggs in the store today, and I about freaked out. I bought all they had. They were $13 a dozen for eggs, yeah. a little over a dollar an egg. I told you, you ran back and grabbed a couple of you're like, eggs, eggs. Well, we just bumped into them at the supermarket, and Who's we were there for eggs. And uh, we saw them, <laughs> they were like, we're here for eggs. We kind of like <laughs> swiftly like... walked over to the egg counterpart, and I just grabbed. Yeah. And no, tomatoes are like gold here, like you just can't find. It's very, very interesting. Plenty um, so, yeah. of fruit, not so many vegetables. Yeah. You take you take a lot of things for granted when I mean, you're in a, in a town where there's, yeah. you know, yeah. big supermarkets and stuff. And like, then... when's the last time you saw an avocado? Probably Mexico. Yeah, Mexico. Or was the last one you ate on the book. Right? Yeah, yeah. And we so. probably won't have any until... Maybe it'll be one of the... In like a year. 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little twist on that question, but one thing I've um, realized from living on a boat is how much stuff you don't need. Yeah. You know, yeah. so there's eight of us on this boat almost all the time, so we can't have lots and lots of stuff. Yeah. And... You don't want to accumulate stuff because it just gets in the way and storage is always a problem but you can lead a pretty minimalistic lifestyle on a boat and it makes you realize i don't need all of that crap you know yeah. it's one thing I, i've come to appreciate about life in general is that you don't need a lot of the stuff that we have yeah. and we've got a house and a, and a backyard and a garage and all of that we just end up consuming a lot of things and yeah. it's it's yeah. Did you it's have a surplus. house before and like, did you, like I mean, car we, and house and like Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Whenever I, you know, went going, growing up in New Zealand and having, um, living in apartments and flats and stuff like that. Yeah. You should just have, it's just so, I mean, we got a lot of stuff actually, like, <laughs> Yeah, we use surfboards or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like they take up a lot of space, but yeah, you have to be careful. Um, even yeah. just buying appliances, you don't need clients for like every little thing we kind of we got a slow cooker and we use that for like multiple different things we cook multiple meals with it it's yeah you, you yeah, learn to you guys like have the instant pot right yeah. 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 yeah yeah the instant pot's amazing i know i kind of wish we bought one of those yeah especially now like because there you can't find yogurt here like i don't think they eat yogurt so like we've been making it i've been trying to make it a little bit myself but i think yeah it's definitely challenging. <laughs> yeah, and even down Six to times. water, like being yeah. uh, wary of how much water you're using and yeah. drinking. And, I mean, that's something that people may not realize is that on a boat, you have to make every single drop of water that you use. Or carry it from somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> or carry it or catch it in the rain. Yeah. But other than that, it's all, it's it's valuable, it's precious. Everything, yeah. right? Power, Power water, water, like everything. Yeah. yeah. So people that might be watching this at home that have never spent time on the ocean, electricity is another huge part of our life and, and monitoring that and, and uh, conserving that. We've got lithium batteries on, on this, this boat. You guys have got Battleborn as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we use the solar, we use the sun to charge those batteries and we have to be careful about how many things we charge. And you guys have got induction. People asked, now someone asked, is the solar actually really enough? to power everything on your boats. Oh yeah. If I think if you're if you're even a little bit smart about it, like 
Right now we're running, uh, well, speaking of solo, I'd like a, a whole, whole gear chilled with solo. I thought you were like, <laughs> cheers! Uh, Guys, you're not doing your job. We, yes. <laughs> for, for the most part, you know, we, we do everything on board, including all of our crew is electric. Thank you. We have an electric uh, induction stove. Uh, you still using gas? You we're doing 50 50. Yeah. We've got induction, but it's just a portable unit that we're experimenting with. Yeah. And yeah. we can't keep up. Not so, with eight crew. Not with eight crew. Yeah. yeah. And so we've got electric toilets. We have three right. fridges running, or two fridges and a freezer. We've got the satellite on, the laptops, yeah. video processing stuff. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a lot. I think we use about 10. 10 kilowatt hours of power per day on Delos, and we produce wow. about eight or nine. And so, if, if I just turn one thing off every now and then, we can yeah. we can make it without running the generator. So, for example, you've been here for a month ish. Yeah. How how often have you run the generator? Maybe like every other day or every second day. Or a like couple that. of hours. No, like an hour. An hour. Like that. Yeah. And you got a big. At the most two. Got a big charger on the. On yeah. The, yeah, it's like a two, it's like 140 amps, like 24 amps. volts. But it's amazing with the new battery, like how we can run the water maker of solar if it's a good solar day, mm -hmm. and how we can run the washing machine. Or washing like in, machine in Mexico, we were not running the generator at all. Yeah. We could go a week, and I would just run it uh, occasionally to like make run, run the you know, like the washing machine or make water or something. Right. We can run the clothes washer off of solar too. It does take yeah. a bit of yeah. yeah, right. And how many amp hours do you have? We have uh, 800. Oh, really? At 12 volts. So 400 at 24 volts. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so here you're having to run it every other day for an hour or so. Yeah, because it, it rains, it's cloudy, and like we were anchored over in Daniels Bay, and the cliffs were right. very tall there. So we would start getting shade from the cliffs at like three in the afternoon so you're losing you know in mexico we were pumping power from like you know seven to six or seven to seven we're getting like full 12 hours and here we're getting like eight hours how many watts of solar have you got we have 1200 watts on the back and rigid panels yeah. and we have 700 on the dodger and the flex panels okay Pretty similar numbers. Yeah. Sorry if this is getting a bit too technical Sorry. for some of you. This is the I stuff like I like to talk about. <laughs> 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 but you like taking fresh water showers. This is true. Yeah. This is true. Yeah, I, I love know. fresh water. We yeah, still got the hand pump toilets. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. That's okay though. You get to make some muscles. Chosen loves those. <laughs> Keep blocking up on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the human error. Before I used it. <laughs> Look, we have a lot of gadgets. Like we have an ice machine, we have a bread machine, you know, a hot water kettle, Two toaster. Spills. You got a washing machine? Yeah. Wash How does that look out? It uses two kilowatts of power, right? Two kilowatts to heat water. Right. When it's just washing and spinning, it's not too much. Yeah. <clears throat> what you got, Hannah? Um, question for you. Okay. From a Patreon. It's not about below deck, is it? <laughs> Banned all below deck questions. Where's the, no, I was kidding. Um, are you, it says, are you more excited to go home or to circumnavigate the globe? A Patreon Ooh. question, maybe repeat it, because I don't think it was yeah. a Patreon question? Yeah, am it was I, a Patreon question. Am I more excited about going home or circumnavigating? Um, those are two very Different. monumental goals of mine and going to be monumental occasions when they happen, but um, we kind of like take things um as they come up you know we don't plan too far ahead yes the goal is to circumnavigate but we i think we're pretty good at planning on the task at hand you know not yeah. not planning too far ahead so for us getting here was a huge one we made it um and then obviously getting across to new zealand that's another huge deal for us um that's home that's going to be a pretty special feeling um sailing into into new zealand waters but we're only there for like five or six months and then we're heading out again and uh, up through Asia and, and yeah, again, going for that uh, circumnavigation. So um, it's a hard question, but they're, they're different. New Zealand's gonna be very special, um, but the ultimate goal is to take this boat around the world. So, yeah. yeah.
Now Hannes is laughing. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Um, does Brian have any tips for Colin to find his casa on their party boat? Who <laughs> wrote uh, <laughs> that? Someone called Dirk. 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 Behave. Um, no, we'll go for a different one. <laughs> um, sorry. That's okay. Find one. Um, where in New Zealand are you? Like, where is home? Auckland. I'm from West oh, you're Auckland. From Auckland. Yeah. Sweet, so that's where you will come you're in. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's West where you're Auckland. Met. Do you remember a Greek area? Yeah. Is it Greek that, area? That's that's where my family lived. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, asked you, I asked you if you could scuba dive, and you're like, yeah. And I was like, all right, let's go. And you you can scuba dive in like once in Thailand. No, I was, no, like, I was certified, but I was like, I've only done it with like a guide and. And he was just like, put your gear on and jump in. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> on Great Barrier. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But I tried to keep my cool and look like I knew what I was doing and I survived. <laughs> Did you like cruising around Great Barrier? It was yeah, cool. Oh my yeah. god. Heaps of lobster. Heaps of great fish there. Yeah. yeah. It was like so much. Yeah, it was a, it was a really cool part. For wow. Sure. So it's been there. Yeah, that's where my family all live now. Mm-hmm. So it would be a huge welcome party probably. With like, it's, yeah. yeah, I think everywhere we go in New Zealand is going to be a big party. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a party. Uh-huh. Um, uh, what were your guys' experience in the doldrums? We didn't have any doldrums. They didn't exist for us. We had 20 knots of breeze in the doldrums. Yeah, it got I... squally though. We got yes. Oh my squalls. God! Yes. Yeah. Really? I didn't think it was. I that mean, much. squalls. Brian's you think like, they were like squalls? all around? <laughs> there was some squalls. Yeah, but so they, were, they were like pretty wimpy squalls. They didn't no, bring yeah. much. No, it was. But there was like still a lot. Wind yeah. And change the direction a little bit. There was some rain and some wind for like two days before we came into the dog. I thought, I thought it was pretty nice. But then we had wind through the whole doldrums and like pretty heavy wind too, and big swell. I was kind of secretly looking forward to glass calm waters and just motoring for a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> Brian was not keen for that. <laughs> not, but it was sailboat. Happen. And yeah. afterwards I was kind of like, okay, it was, I was happy about that. But I was, yeah, I could have used a little break there in the middle. But yeah. It was fine. So we, we planned our crossing. I had it in my head, everything planned out down to like the costumes and everything. I was like, yep, we're gonna do the celebration, the, the ceremony. Yeah. And I was picturing just like glassy water. Me too. Yeah. We'd all just jump in and we'd just do a little breaststroke across the equator and yeah. then everyone, because I wanted everyone to swim across the equator. And when we got there, it was like six foot seas. Yeah. So it was like 20 knots of wind. The boat's pitching I like, <laughs> and I'm like, you guys don't want to jump in? They're like, <laughs> uh, it was, it was not exactly how I pictured yeah. it being. It was, it was the same for us. We made harness when we were on the book though. Yeah. 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 The swell was, was massive and the current was so strong. Yeah. I was like, I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm going to die. No, I was we, like. We were in the water from the crossing boat, but we didn't pull yeah, out of the rope. Yeah. Uh, just okay. to, other way, because if a head was lost in the swell, yeah. he's not going to find us again. So. Yeah. Do you want to, does, uh, maybe Brian, do you want to explain what the doldrums are? Like why, why yeah. do so many people talk about the doldrums? So there's this area known as the Inner Tropical Convergent Zone, ITCZ or Z, depending on where you're from. And it's basically where there's two uh, high pressure systems that dictate most oceans uh, in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And, you know, you've got uh, going like this, uh, these clock-like patterns. Uh, and this one in the, in the southern hemisphere, and where they come together, there's this band in the middle that is sort of situated around the equator, but it does vary north and south a little bit. Uh, and that's known as the doldrums, and it's an area where the trade winds are known to be weak or inconsistent, there, and they would literally just be stuck in the doldrums for days or weeks. In fact, I had a friend that was stuck in there for like two weeks really? last time he went across, and he didn't have enough fuel to motor, so he would get pushed across the equator one day and then the next a current push back. Not another crossing. Uh, so you get pushed back. You get pushed back and it's just fighting this for weeks at a time. So that's the building. It's also called the horse latitudes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe the uh, ships were trying to lighten their loads so they could get across and pushing everything they could. Including the horses. I am maybe just making that. Right. <laughs> Don't believe that. Mm. Um, so when we were planning our passages, our crossings, uh, we're all 
pretty much um, one of the main things we were worried about was getting through the dolphins because sailboats have a lim limited amount of fuel. We hate motoring and uh, we like to sail everywhere we go because it's in that moment, I guess, free transport. Nothing's free on a boat though. And it's cool. Yeah. Motoring sucks. So we're all, <laughs> technically, my understanding is that they, they can be anywhere between seven north and seven south in latitude. And that's sort of the area where they could be. So we're all hoping as we're approaching the equator that the convergence zone is really narrow. And we kind of get through it and then back into the trade winds because trade wind sailing is amazing. Yeah. How are we looking? Um, less questions now, but if, do you guys ever get seasick? One question. Oh, seasickness is always the interesting. It's always one that people ask. And everyone's always asking if you guys are going to Japan, which is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? I'll take the seasickness first. Yeah. yeah. So, I, you never really get seasick. I, I get what I call squishy. I get, yeah. I don't ever feel like I'm going to vomit or anything. I just get a little bit irritated. I get a little bit tired. I don't really want to do much for like the first maybe day or two. Yeah. And then after that, I'm like, fine and perfect. Uh, you're somewhat different. Though. Yeah, I definitely get more seasick. And I think it's more difficult now because of Sierra. Because she often want to be downstairs playing. And needs to go to the toilet and needs to do all of these things. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, you. She's like, mm -hmm. um, And so it's harder for me to be downstairs. And I usually get very oh, seasick yeah. when I'm downstairs with her. So... It's been challenging yeah, with her, and I would say, yeah, for the first couple of days, it's hard. Um, but I, I take some seasickness pills sometimes, and I also have like this shock bracelet. Have you guys heard about those? It's kind of like a things that you wear on your wrist, and it like shocks you. Um, and that has been working sometimes if it's not too rough. So, do you guys? Uh, did you guys have any bad seasickness? So go ahead. Um, so we had Vince Cat come on, he was a patron of ours, and he had to spend, um, spend a lot of time doing long passages, yeah. so he was really worried, he took, he took some seasick pills, um, and he was sick, I think he threw up, he threw up in there, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then after a few days he got used to it. Yeah, and then, I had those too, they always used, make me feel crazy. Yeah, I've, used, I've tried pretty much everything, but... Some of, even the seasickness pills sometimes make me feel really weird. Yeah, yeah. Like, very strange. Um, can you, can you really? did incredibly well. Really? Yeah. yeah. She felt ill the first day or two, and then after that was fine for the next oh, 18 last days. One. Yeah. I guess she's first been on the wall since such a young age, right? Yeah, well, she got her sea legs early on. Yeah, so yeah. she was four months old, right? Can you edit while you're at sea and rock with it? I can. You can? I can. That's one thing I can't do, look at a computer. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> okay. I know. Yeah. I can't look at a screen, like, I always listen to, I can't read, so I always listen to both. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. She's yeah. Yeah. Like the same. And then everybody asked, why do you think everybody asked us if we're going to Japan? No. Because <laughs> it'd be the coolest, right? Like, oh, here's something. That was our plan. Like, our, on the first circumnavigation, we were in Manila, in the yeah. Philippines, yeah. and the, the logical step would have been to sail to, like, Taiwan and then start working our way up the Japanese oh, yeah. Polygon. And we just we ran out of money, honestly. Yeah. Like, we're like, well, we only have a few thousand dollars left. If we're going to have money, we better do it in Malaysia right. instead of Japan. Right. Because Malaysia is pretty cheap. Yeah. We can leave the boat, we can go work. And so I think it would be a fantastic thing to do is like do as long as like the Great Pacific Loop. Uh, and you know, we go down uh, through New Zealand, and then maybe Australia, and work our way up through Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. but then go up through Philippines, Japan, and then. Uh, you know, Alaska and the Inside Passage, and, uh, I don't know. That, yeah. I could be a thing. What do you think? Yeah, I have not planned past French Polynesia. That's where my plans stop. <laughs> I mean, of course, I would love to sail in Japan. Like, it sounds amazing and very, like, I don't know, it just sounds crazy. But I also haven't planned past this. You've got, country, you've got so. no idea where you want to go after this. I mean, not against the wind, so that general direction. <laughs> <That wind. laughs> <laughs> Which is how uh, yeah. I ended up doing the first trip in navigation, is just always sailing down the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, but you did some gnarly passages around. Yeah, and South, South Africa. South Africa, Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah. 
What's the time? I got, I got, got 10 minutes left. Through. Yeah? Any questions, Dick? Um, someone asked, um, what's your, like, California Eve and then where are you stopping on the way? Okay, so we've got the three months visa in, in uh, French Polynesia, and then we're going to go to the Cook Islands. How, how are the Cook Islands? Okay, you should go to a place called Palmerston Atoll, okay. and a place called Niue for sure. New, the, the country Niue? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's Cook Islands, and then and then New I think. I thought New was part of Cooks. It's so close. Or is it its own? It's its own country. Yeah, New And then okay, after that, that Tom New is offended. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> Sorry, any New Ends or what? Um, and then Tonga. Tonga's gonna be on there. Right? Tonga's awesome. And the cool thing about Tonga is it sort of runs north to south. So you can start up north in Babaru and then go down to the Hapai group and then you can sail like a few hundred miles towards New Zealand it's a good launching point. Yeah, you live from Western Tonga and uh, there's one atoll or something out there. I can't remember the name of it, but yeah. Maybe Be- Minerva Reef? Beverage Reef. Beverage Reef? I believe yeah. it's in the middle of nowhere, right? New Zealand. We, yeah, we hit Beverage Reef on the way to I can't actually remember. I can't remember <laughs> what happened in the last I time. know I've been there, right? <laughs> it was either Minerva or Beverage. I can't remember which. Yeah. And then so coming out, we're going to have to go to um, Tonga again. We're going to have to leave the dogs in Tonga, I think, because Pitbulls are banned oh, in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if through, wow, <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. So he, uh, he left to stay. I think we found a family for him to stay with in um, Tonga. <laughs> And then um, do New Zealand for like five months and then back up and pick them up in Tonga and carry on. But yeah, wow. there's a few there's a few countries and, and beautiful things to see between French Polynesia and New Zealand. But uh, the cyclone season sort of officially starts end of October. So we don't want to be in any of the Polynesian islands um, when November comes around. So for the whole New Zealand summer, we'll be hanging out and sailing and living the dream. Yeah. You guys will still be dancing out here. So. I remember just craving New Zealand because it's a long season. It's like the start and then you know, because it starts crossing in like March or April and then by the time October, November runs around. Yeah. It's been like seven or eight months of just like islands and palm trees and beaches. And yeah. I was like, man, I just want a movie theater. I want a freaking McDonald's. I want a city. I want something <laughs> like McDonald's. I want some like, variation in weather or something. Like yeah. Who's uh, driven? It's good. yeah. How long are we in Auckland for? From uh, October till May. Right. November till May? Yeah. We went to Fiji then. Fiji's May to be we sailed unreal. To Fiji. From, we sailed from uh, Apua to Bay of Islands. Fiji. Mm. Yeah, man. That's cool. <laughs> so many good places. Should we do one more to wrap it up? Yeah, the last. I think we got the crew on the dock. Wrap, a good wrap up back. question, I think, was someone said. He said, um, you have plans tonight. What are the plans for this evening? We're all going our Plans separate ways. <laughs> We're all going our and separate ways. Someone also asked about Annapolis, and that's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Annapolis is fun. Yeah, so yeah. should we take Annapolis first and then the plans yeah. for the evening? Yeah, so you guys try to make Annapolis? We love, I mean, going to the Annapolis boat show, when is it? Oh, October? October. Yeah. It they want to know if you're going to be there. Yeah, it, it's been amazing. I want to know if you want to be there too. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, we have not. It's it's a long flight, and with a toddler, and here it's not very easy to leave the boat. I feel like our boat is just big enough too that it's very hard to find like places to haul out or to put in the marina. So I think it depends on a lot of things, but I would love to go. You would love to go. It's an amazing time, and it's a great party, and it's great to meet everybody, all of our friends. But yes. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how we feel. Mm. From from our perspective, the, the boat show, we don't go to boat shows to look at boats. We go to boat shows to, to meet other content creators, to meet companies that we work with or want to work with. 
Um, it's a whole different experience for us, but for us anyway, it just ends up being a huge party because you just meet so many cool people yeah. that you don't really, it's not very productive from our side anyway. <laughs> so yeah. if we're in New Zealand, it's a long and expensive trip. Yeah. For a party. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. But Jeff yeah. Bach, if you're up there watching. <laughs> Billy and Grace are watching. Oh, Billy and Grace are watching. Oh, Billy and Grace are watching. What was the other part? Oh, what are we doing tonight? Tonight. tonight. We're going to the one and only restaurant in town. Really? Did you book a table? We booked it out, yeah. Oh, nice. Like 10 people. We're going to have... 10 people. Play the scissors rock and can go because that'd be dangerous. We're going to have pizza and we're going to drink some beers. Yeah. And then I heard the rumor of a little party later on, maybe? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe yeah. some tattoos? Oh, tattoos? You no. tattoos tonight? Yeah, you didn't know? Max is gonna do them. Seriously? Yeah, we're doing it on Harley. You didn't know? You getting a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, scrap no, that. I don't know. Paul is getting the tattoo. He just doesn't know yet. You offered him your, your, you offered him your thigh. I did, but not after he's been drinking. He doesn't drink. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He doesn't drink, so you're saying. Max doesn't drink. All right. Oh, shit. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. That was a lot of fun. Thank, Thank you guys for sitting with me. Yeah. Um, I want to try a thing, get some interesting people and just do a live. It's not like a podcast because you guys are able to interact with us. I think it's a cool idea. They also asked Sierra. Do you want to see Sierra? Oh. No, no. <laughs> hi, Sierra. Hi, guys. No. <laughs> Say hi, Jamie. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Bonjour. Chosen. Awesome. Alright guys, thanks for watching Thank and you. we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. How do you stop this? Uh, <laughs> How do you stop this? Oh there. <laughs>